In this video tutorial, we'll be covering the content in Chapter 11, Classifying Unassigned Points in an LAS Point Cloud, as is covered in the same chapter of the Amazon eBook, Working with LiDAR Using ArcGIS Desktop. Between version 10.2 and 10.3 of ArcGIS, there are some important differences when we're talking about classifying unassigned points in Point Cloud. In 10.2, we only have three classification methods available to us in Arc Toolbox, and that's because we're following the older LAS specification standards, version 1.3 from ASPRS, and because of that, we have a more limited classification scheme. In version 10.3, we have more methods available to us. We have five classification methods available, and we're following the more updated LAS specifications, which are version 1.4, that allows us to have more classes and expanded classification scheme. And it's important to note that all of the USGS data that we are using for our LiDAR data is compatible with the newer version of the standard. And as we go through these different tools, there will be a small symbol letting you know if that tool works with version 10.2. And be sure to check your book for more information and some screenshots for working with that older version. So I'm in my Hopkinsville data set again, the one we've been working with the last few tutorials. And I am going to go to my layer properties, change my filter so I'm looking at all of my classes. If I go to my source tab, I can see before I get started that out of 21 million points, I have almost half of those, 9 million or so, that are unassigned. So classifying these points is pretty important to working with this LAS data. So I'm going to go to my Arc Toolbox, and we're going to be opening our first tool, Changing LAS Class Codes. This will give us a wholesale change. So let's say I find out that everything that was assigned to Class 9 is now going to need to be assigned to Class 6. It was all classified incorrectly. So under my 3D Analyst Tools, I go to my Data Management, LAS dataset toolbox, and that's all five of these tools right here. I'm going to set my input to be that Hopkinsville dataset. And then I, let's say it's class nine that I found was assigned incorrectly. So I'd enter that here under class codes, hit the plus button. And then in this table here, I'm going to type in my new class number. And those class numbers, again, for the two different versions are available in your ebook. That would be a really important table to reference or through ASPRS. And when I'm ready to run the tool, I'd click OK. We're going to hit cancel here because I don't actually want to run this tool because it's going to make a permanent change to my entire data set. So that's another important thing to remember. We're working with these tools. So our next tool is set LAS class code using features. And to get started, you'll need to create a building feature class to use this. And your book goes through this in a little bit more detail, giving you the links that you need. And I've just sped right through it here, assuming that you know how to edit a shapefile or a geodatabase feature class. So here's our tool we're going to be using, setting those class codes. Make sure you have your filters set appropriately. And our input is Hopkinsville. And then our input feature class is that buildings feature class we just created. And under new class, this is where you're going to want to set it and tell it wherever there's a building feature, I want my point cloud to be classified as class 6, which is buildings. Make sure you update your statistics before you move on, if necessary. And when you go to your layer properties now, if we look at those code statistics, we can see we now have building points, which we didn't have before. So if I change my symbology to show point classes, I can now take a look and see that I actually have building points. Our next tool, which is available in version 10.3, is point statistics by proximity. And we're going to go ahead and open up that tool in our toolbox. We're just going to be discussing it here. We're not going to run it. Uh, this is a tool you might use if you have a specific 3D feature, so something has elevation assigned to it, and you want to identify points that fall within a specific elevation, a specific Z distance of that feature. So an example that's given in your book is planting vegetation trimming around power lines. The power line would have a 3D feature, it would have a Z value associated with it, and you could select all points that fall within a specific range of elevations from that power line. Okay, so the next tool we're going to cover is classify LAS by height. And for this particular tool, we can set a height specification. We can either use our ground source or we can use a model key, which is going to vary based on your data that you're using. And we can 
determine for different classes that a height at which those points would be assigned to that class. It would be that height or anything above it would be assigned to that particular class code. There are defaults with this tool. Um, your book covers what happens if you just run it using the defaults. You can't change the default class codes, but you can change the default class heights by simply clicking and typing those heights in. So the last tool we're going to cover today is interactive class coding. And this is actually not done from Arc Toolbox. So I'm going to close Arc Toolbox. This is done from the profile view in our LAS toolbar. So I'm going to zoom in to a specific portion of my data set here. And I am going to go ahead and create a profile. We did this back in chapter eight. So if you need to refresh a little bit on this particular tool, go ahead and check out chapter 8. I'm going to make sure I have my filter set to all for the time being. I'm going to click on my profile view tool and create my profile. I can now actually assign specific classes to the points that I'm viewing right here from my profile view window. So you can see here we have, I actually made my unassigned points a larger point size so that they'd really stand out. Um, I changed the symbology in the table of contents there. So as I zoom in, I can see right now I just have my ground points displayed and my unassigned points displayed. I want to classify those unassigned points that are being displayed with ground. If I go into my symbology, I can actually open this at the same time. I can remove those other point classes that are showing and just have my unassigned value showing. To apply this change to my profile window, I just click the refresh button. And this is actually really useful because it can keep us from accidentally reclassifying points that we've already worked with in here. So then I'm just using my select tool to select those points that I know are ground return points. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just holding down the shift key to make multiple selections. When I'm done selecting, I'm going to click on edit. And what I'll do here is I'll assign the class code and then click apply. And you can see those points actually disappear. And that's because I'm only displaying unassigned points. And that's actually a good thing because now what I can do is I can, in this same profile view, work with another class. So let's say I want to change these points that are obviously building roofs here to uh, be class six or buildings. So I'm going to, again, select all these points, holding down the shift key and working through my point cloud here. Once I have everything selected that I wanted in the same view, and again, I'm not doing everything just for the sake of example, then I would go ahead and select my class six and apply. And then these will disappear from my profile view as well, because again, I'm only showing those unassigned points. So I can go through, I can do this again for my vegetation. Um, I can go through and do it for all of my ground points that are showing in this profile. Um, lastly, I'm going to just show you quickly how you can check on your work here. You want to go back to your layer properties and I've decided to add all of my symbology back in and look, you can see those things that I classified as class six buildings are showing up as uh, sort of that salmon color and that's what I have assigned for my class six display. So you can keep toggling between changing your symbology and hitting the refresh button in that profile view to allow you to see the points that you want to work with at any, any given time. Once you've reclassified a bunch of points, you're going to notice that your statistics are out of date when you go back to that properties view. To update that, again, we're going to open up our catalog, go to our LAS data set and properties, and update. And when you do this, you can actually see uh, that those point counts will change and that's how you can check on your work and make sure everything is being made a permanent change which is what this tool will do. This is a pretty time intensive tool to work with but it is one that you'll most likely come back to using quite a bit. You're going to want to make sure your points are classified appropriately before you move on to make any DEMs from this point cloud, anything that is going to rely on those classes being coded appropriately. And finally, we're going to talk about flags within this data set. If you go to your filter tab in your layer properties dialog, you'll actually see on the right hand side there your flags options. 
Most of the time you're just going to leave these as default. You can get more information about that in the book. And that's it for chapter 11 and chapter 12 we're going to be creating a digital elevation model. This video was produced by Virginia View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing, outreach, education, and research with funding from the America View Consortium in partnership with Virginia Geospatial Extension and GeoTED.